Hey everybody, this is Pastor Jeff. We're going to continue in chapter 16 of Romans, uh, starting at verse 17. And in here, Paul takes a different direction with uh, his um, with his writing. He has just uh, spent time greeting various people and, and, and such in the Church of Rome. Now he it's as if he's uh, in the middle of his closing, he says, wait a minute, I want to tell you one more thing. Perhaps one of the names themselves and his thoughts uh, brought him to this situation or brought this to, to mind. But he writes here, I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them. Now, so he's cautioning the church because, uh, and Paul often cautions the church in his, in his New Testament writings about those that are antichrist about those who are, are trying to deceive them about those who are mixed up in their doctrines and their understanding of uh, of scripture and their understanding of the, the words of christ and uh, uh, misunderstanding of god and who he is and such or and so paul gives this warning watch out for those who cause division and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine you've been taught so so who caused division uh as christ disciples we are not to cause division within churches we are to create unity and yes sometimes there is a disagreement on the interpretation of scripture and such of the application of scripture but that should not cause division it should cause discussion and it should create opportunities for us to be uh, forgiving it should create within us um, uh, uh, understanding it should uh, we should strive to pray for one another. We should. It should be uh, not something that it's a negative to have disagreements about Scripture, but it should be something that actually pulls us together and allows us to discuss. Because we all will have different interpretations of Scriptures. Don't do not allow that to cause a division. And and then he goes on and says, create obstacles contrary to the doctrine. Now we can look at this in two ways. One is it's against the doctrine of Scripture to create obstacles. And so don't let somebody else's uh, ideas and create an obstacle for you. You, you are, are striving to be adult Christians. You are striving to be mature Christians. Don't allow someone else to become an obstacle to you. Uh, you, can't, you can't get away with that forever. Eventually you have to stand up and say, I'm mature. I'm not gonna allow someone else to be an obstacle to me and my serving Christ. So it could be that. And the other thing it could be that they're twisting the doctrine purposefully to create obstacles. Uh, either way, when there's the di differences, when there's different ideas, different opinions of scripture should not cause division and we shouldn't allow it to, to become an obstacle. And, uh, but we need to avoid people who just have that spirit of being dividers and avoid those people who have that spirit of creating obstacles. If you have, if there's someone that that seems like all they want to do is argue with you about scripture. They want to twist the words of scripture around and make you stumble and fall. They want to confuse you about scripture. Avoid that person. That person is not edifying. It's not lifting you up. The, their words they say are not building your strength in Christ. They're actually creating weakness. It goes on in 18. It says, for such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. And by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the native. Now, he's really stressing here that there's these talking about people who have the spirit of division and create obstacles. And, um, and, and it's a reflection of their, the absence of a true walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the absence of a true relationship with Jesus Christ that these things come about. And uh, because of that absence, they may be walking around, or because of that absence with their walk of Christ, they may be walking around with just uh, ideas that are not biblical. And it, but but their own lack of de or desire to grow closer to Christ allows these false doctrines to come in and cause trouble. Alternatively, it could be talking about someone who is purposefully out that thrives on causing trouble that enjoys creating conflict and whose words can deceive and especially deceive those who are weakest or youngest or the immature Christians. We need to watch out for those. We need to watch out for our immature Christians around us that they don't be 
drawn off track by those that would mislead them. And in 19, it goes on and says, for your obedience is known to all. So Paul's pointing out, says, hey, the obedience of the Roman church is known to everyone. Everyone knows that the, the, that the obedience that the people of Rome, the Christians of Rome, have a great, have a great relationship with Jesus Christ. But he says, even so, or but, I want you to be wise as to what is good and innocent as to what is evil. Understand scripture teaches us about good and te scripture teaches us about evil. And we need to understand that so we can push away the evil things and cling to that which is good. Think upon those things that are good. Think upon those things that are innocent. You know, that's what we want to do. Paul writes in other places to think upon the good things, not the bad things. Do not let this evil creep up. We need to understand it. And, and that's what part of what Scripture, the Bible does, is it teaches us the difference between good and evil. And, and since the beginning of time, when Adam and Eve fell, uh, they ate of the, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And now we have the scriptures which builds upon that knowledge of good and evil for the purpose of understanding what good is that we might do good and understanding evil is that we might avoid it. And then it goes on in verse 20, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And so Paul says there is a time when Satan will be crushed. And, and we can look at this again in multiple ways. Uh, we are more than conquerors, Paul writes. We are never victims. And so if we look at this in a micro level or at many times throughout our life, continually Jesus Christ comes to our rescue, crushing Satan, crushing the enemy against that is against us and lifting us up and setting us back on the path. We have many victories in Christ Jesus throughout our lives uh, as, as Christians where God steps in and defeats the enemy for us. And then there's the ultimate, the macro, the big ultimate, uh, crushing of Satan at the end of the ages when Christ comes again and he puts an end to this world and, to the, and creates a new heaven and a new earth and sends Satan and the, 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 his fallen angels and those that hate Jesus into the abyss. And that is the ultimate crushing of Satan under, under the, the feet of Christ, the body of Christ. Amen.